live from New York, it's Ask an Engineer. Get your stolen noise out. It's time for the hardware happy hour here at Adafruit is Ask an Engineer. It's me, Lady Ada, the engineer that will be asking and saying and doing stuff. And with me is Mr. Lady Ada, also wearing black on camera control. Uh, and the Adafruit factory is behind us, the third character in our uh, hardware adventures. But right now Adafruit's uh, resting after a long week or half week of making, testing, manufacturing, shipping, designing all the hardware you know and love. So right now we're just going to spend uh, an hour doing some fun stuff, talking about what's going on in the community. Yeah, what's I guess we could have originally called it uh, hardware happy hour, but you know it could have been a longer amount of time, and then when we you then you're stuck yeah, with an hour forever. Yeah. But Let's we're going to we're going to stick to asking engineer. Ask engineer. <laughs> you know what you're getting. There's an engineer. There's questions. There's answers. We okay. we deliver. Okay, what's on tonight's show? On well, tonight's show, the Coats Canary, 10% off the native for store all the way up to 11:59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, except for eight a box and gift certificates. For to us, an open source hardware company in New York City. Thank you. This is how we're doing this. No loans, no venture capital. Your purchases help us do all this stuff and more. Show and tell people around the world showing and sharing their projects. They don't talk about that. We had epic show and tell this week. Back mailbags and stop by. We read your emails to us. Time travel around in the world of makers, hackers, artists, and engineers. Some time travel, some Adafruit factory footage, some 3D printing. We got some new products. We got some more amazing top secret. This is like three weeks in a row of top secret. That's your questions. In Discord, go there now, adafruit.it slash Discord. We'll give away something, all that and more on, you guessed it, Ask an Engineer. Boom. <clears throat> okay. It's going to rock out. Okay, so uh, you have the Coats Canary. Um, as you're shopping, there's a bunch of stuff. When you add it to your cart, you get free. We yeah. get, um, sorry, I was, I was so enamored by all these free things. Yeah. Um, $99 or more, you get a free... Uh, half size promo proto, uh, $199 or more you get free UPS ground shipping, that's high quality ground shipping in the continental United States. $299 or more you get a Circuit Playground Express, our all-in-one development board that we just had, like 12 engineers say, was the number one pick for making all sorts of projects. You can use it with Arduino, with MakeCode, with CircuitPython, with Code.org, CS Discoveries. Pretty much anything you want to do and any way you want to do it is possible. Circuit Playground Express, so if you order $300, you'll get one for free. So maybe just get a whole bunch of Circuit Playgrounds and we'll give you an even another one. So you've got like one spare. Um, and those are the freebies available. Shipping. Shipping. So on your checkout, because this is important, um, there might be some delays because there's weather um, right now, in the world. In the, especially in the southeast, but you know, Memphis is the hub for yeah. UPS, so that's causing some delays even if it's not going yeah. to the east. Um, but we suggest UPS for charitable shipping. If you don't care about how fast it gets there, go to Postal Service. And then for international, go to DHL. If you're in New York City, you order before 11 a.m. It's one of zip codes in Manhattan. You can get same-day delivery. Lady, this was an epic show-and-tell this week. Yes. Um, there was One, cats, two, there three, was fish, four, there five, was... There, there was actually about 15 people. Yeah, there was, there was a ton we're of back. stuff. Yeah, there was a, a ton. Remember uh, like two weeks ago, we're like, we'll, we'll never have anybody show up on show and tell ever again. Well, we always say no, that, we never, never said happens. that. That's not true. Okay, who's on the show and tell? Okay, start off with Scott um, S. from Adafruit Northwest, who had a scoop right hot off of the GitHub commits. Um, the display I.O. library for CircuitPython um, latest code commit allows you to very easily um, drag and drop bitmap files onto your circuit player on board and then display them like as an image on your TFT. So perfect for a Halloween project. So we might see some Halloween projects coming soon. But even if you're not using Halloween, if you want to um, add graphics to your circuit Python project, this uh, we're we're really doing an epic job with display IO. Scott's been working on this quite hard for the last month. Um, John Park previewed next week's. Uh, this week's project, tomorrow's um, John Park workshop, uh, he's going to be building um, a skull using a mold and uh, a water or milk jugs. So you get those like gallon jugs. Well, you can turn those into skulls and then you can decorate them with neopixels and LEDs. Like that sounds like a party I would love to go to. Um, and if you agree, you should watch JP's show tomorrow when he'll be doing that for half an hour. Uh, Noan Pedro showed off this week's epic project. It was a 200th video. Uh, today or tomorrow, this week, I don't remember. 200th episode, yeah. Yeah, 200th episode. Um, and they made a Breath of the Wild Zelda saw blade. So this is like an, an ancient sword. Great for killing guardians because uh, you can just like swing it around and just yeah. whack them. Yeah, show that video tonight. Yeah, we'll show the video. It's just this, like 
epic, amazing build. Took them many, many weeks. Um, and it, the saw blade even rotates, and there's like LEDs, and it's UV, so it kind of has that bluish, ancient look to it. Um, and then we also had a bunch of people in the community. Kim showed up with Mitty the cat. Mitty the cat uh, is uh, is gaining too much power in this household because now uh, Mitty even has her own skateboard. Um, and they've trained her to um, control the skateboard because the throttle gives treats when yeah. it's pulled. There's so a like feather, motor, shield, motor, controller, motor wing, and battery. then it, you, the treat goes in. And she the pulls cat, it. The cat pulls the... Uh, the treat comes out, the but then she's turned and, on. And then the skateboard The skateboard forward. moves, and, and she's cool with it. Yeah. So they've slowly but surely trained this cat to become an Uber driver. I think the cat trained the people to do this. Well, nobody really knows yeah. which way it was. Um, Dave Estelle's came by, showed off some projects. He's been writing tons of guides. Uh, two guys even went live. Sorry, I think one one guide went live this week, and then a guide uh, last week. Um, this week he's working on a tilt ears robot. So when you tilt your head, little ears um, flip up. It's just it's adorable. It's like all those gifts you see of puppies when they get interested, they kind of tilt their head and their ear pops up. Um, so he made that as a cosplay prop, and then he's working on a, a four-legged stumbly bot with a little tail, and and uh, it's kind of interesting. Like I guess Sophie is chatting with him about ideas, but it's kind of a funky design, like kind of an organic looking robot. Doesn't work that efficiently, but I don't know, maybe it looks cool. It looks like a bug. So he'll, um, he, he didn't have to do a live demo of it moving it, but he'll probably do a guide real soon. JMK uh, noticed that uh, the Cricut has a really nice audio amp on it. Um, so he modified his iPod to have the audio come through um, the Cricut, get amplified, it's in a box, so it's like a little audio amplifier with a speaker in a box. And then the Circuit Playground um, has NeoPixels that light up with the sound effect. So it's kind of a, a cool portable, like audio reactive light and sound enjoyment lunchbox. Um, a cool hack and uh, works really great. So he sounds real good. Um, Bill is helping uh, a quadriplegic in college who wants to notify their teacher um, when she's in class and um, wanted some way that she could like turn on a light or something. And um, he made this cool hack where the Circuit Playground is in a diffused case. And um, he did this trick where the batch files for like a Windows batch files on the Circuit Playground and they get double clicked and it's like, it sends a message to itself. It's a very cool way of, of having a computer control of a Circuit Playground board without having to add any extra software. You're just using whatever's built into Windows because uh, she's got a Windows tablet. Uh, he also made a version with the uh, trinket uh, that can clip onto her wheelchair uh, for like a mini indicator. And then uh, thirdly, he made a trinket to AT adapter, like AT switch adapter, uh, really low cost, but adds all of CircuitPython and HID control, and of course the RGB LED for feedback. So uh, looks really neat when stuff's coming out of Bill's uh, AT projects. And I also want to say, thank Scott for spending five hours debugging um, somebody's hospital AT project. So thanks, Scott, from Bill and, and his friend. Um, Daniel and uh, his son are going on holiday, and they wanted to make a fish feeder that would fish, feed the fish while they were gone. So they used a Circuit Playground Express and a servo, and once a day it rotates, the servo rotates a little uh, container full of fish food. It'll feed the fish, and then wait another 24 hours, and it even tells you how many days it's fed the fish. So. I think it's, it looks pretty good. I think like the fish are going to be fed and taken care of um, even during uh, their vacation. And he also figured out a way to get the Spooky Eyes um, TFT project to work on Circuit Playground Express, which is pretty epic. Uh, it's not really designed for SPI TFT displays, but he, he got it working somehow. Uh, and that's cool. So he's going to send a pull request um, to us and we'll add that in. Um, and then uh, Jake got a multimeter and is designing a 3D printed dock for an iPhone XS with AirPod and pencil holder. So that's like a pretty nice, that's, use, that's something you would use because you use yeah. the AirPods, the AirPods yep. and the pencil. Um, he also got HP laptop, it's gonna turn into a Chromebook. He's got an XP tower with an Athlon processor. It's gonna be turned to a Chrome Media Center. So it'll be Chrome Media Athlon Plus Media Center Pro XP. And then uh, C. Scott um, demoed a circuit Python, um, uh, CV synthesizer, like four voice control thing, and it's not quite working yet, but maybe by next week or week after it will. Um, 
He also uh, had a big release today. He worked on the stage for the Apple event. Maybe. Maybe. Everything's a secret. Everything's a secret. He said he can, maybe. He yeah. came and had some, something to do with it. Yeah. And um, he said he really liked the Circuit Playground Express. It's great for um, industrial testing. So yeah, he goes to factories. He's temperature. He's for powering LEDs. He's testing IR LEDs. He's, you know, he's controlling neopixels. He's doing analog reads and, and, and analog writes. So it's a good uh, all-purpose tool. Um, and so it just fits in your pocket, you plug it in, you don't need drivers, and you can uh, really quickly debug, and you've got the plotter and moo, which is great. Uh, so it's an yep. all-purpose uh, tool for debugging hardware. Yeah, so it was epic. We just finished exactly at like 7.59. Yep. Okay. Whew. All participants on the show and tell, get an SCN on the show and tell sticker. If you're on the show and tell, email support at adafruit.com, and we will send you out a sticker. Part of our Adafruit live series of shows, JP is showing up tomorrow. For his show, and you will see the glowing skull. But last week was the one-eyed, skull. one-eyed skull so, that yeah. saw you. So this is a this is a video from all-seeing skull. Okay, back to Bell Max and stop by. That's terrifying. And we're gonna no, it wasn't terrifying. I mean, it's gonna cute skull way. Yeah, skulls are friends. Uh, dear Ed Fruit Withers, my shiny new circuit playground arrived on the late USPS truck tonight, and it's even better than I anticipated. No problems at all getting up and going. Just running the strand test program now, but I'm looking forward to many hours of playing with it. I really wish this had been available a year and a half ago when I was teaching college electronics art class. It's an outstanding learning tool. Yay! Thanks. Everyone agrees, circuit playground. Everyone it agrees. is a, a good idea. Okay, don't forget. Go to adafruit.it slash discords. That's where we're at all the time now. And also 24-7, 365. But if you're not there by the end of the show, we won't be able to answer your questions. So get there now. On JP's show, we do a make code minute. It's about two minutes. Double the fun. You know, to, to make code Twice in, the in, in the theme of a minute it's or just so. like the hard, It's just like a hardware happy hour. It might last a little bit longer. That's true. Because that's what you want. Actually, you know what's true? Whenever we go to a restaurant, there's happy hour. It's always like two or three hours long. Yeah, and no one's going to be like, hey, it's, yeah, a, no, it's, it's only been one hour. I would no like more to, drinks. I would like to pay full price for this no. expensive drink. Okay, so uh, here's a Make Code Minute from JP. Take it away. Do this. It is time for the Make Code Minute. What we're going to look at is infrared communications between two Circuit Playground Express boards running Make Code. Uh, so you can see I've got a couple of Circuit Playground Express boards, and they're both running the same code. Uh, so what's happening in this code is I'm using this on infrared receive num pad, and in my button presses, I have infrared send number. When I click A, it sends a 1. When I click B, it sends an 8. So both boards are running the same code. That means that if I press the left button on the first Circuit Playground Express, the second Playground Express, Circuit Playground Express, is going to invoke this on infrared receive number. Uh, and then what I have it doing is a couple things. I'm blinking the little red power LED or indicator LED on and off. Uh, and then if that number that it's receiving is a 1, because the left button was pressed, we're going to light up a NeoPixel uh, red. If the number that comes across is 8, I kind of arbitrarily chose, chose these numbers, uh, because the B button was pressed, then the pixel color is going to go to yellow. And which pixel lights up is actually using that same number. Uh, so let's do a demo of this right now. So I'm going to take uh, this Circuit Playground Express here, and I'll press the right button. And you can see, oh, this guy's kind of upside down here. Let me move him. Uh, you can see he's receiving the number 8, so the 8th NeoPixel is lighting up yellow. If I press the other button, he's receiving a 1, so the first, and remember the first, the actual first NeoPixel on here is 0, so the number 1 NeoPixel there uh, is lighting up in red, and it'll work in both directions. 
Oh, I know that's kind of bright, so you can't see the colors too well. The yellow is very blown out, but that red is definitely red. Uh, and so that is how you can use infrared communications on the Circuit Playground Express between two boards inside of Make Code. And I'm underneath this USB cable. And that was your Make Code Minute. Okie dokie, Circuit Python Code Plus community. Um, this is making the rounds on Twitter and I wanted to show it off. This is so cute. This is a little... Oh, a um, mini Sam. It's, it's one of the little Lego astro astronauts. That's what it's modeled after. But yeah. this is a, a mini Sam and, uh, you know, for the Sam D21. And it runs Circuit Python. And I love how, how small and cute meep, it meep, is. Meep, it's meep, got meep, meep. The, two, uh, the two arms are capacitive touch, it looks like. And then there's two buttons on the legs so if you actually walk yeah. it around it'll actually press the buttons meep, meep, meep. but it's basically a trinket yeah and the cool thing is we're starting to see interesting uh, remixes and variants of some of the things that circuit python can run on and because it's so easy to get it up and running and the software essentially is a text file when you have the usb drive show up and you're just like oh i'm gonna like write some python now so this is kind of neat. We're interested to see what... I, li I like this, like, a unique and weird... Not weird, but it's a kind of interestingly shaped yeah. um, circuit board. And I think, you know, people have so much... It's so easy to get circuit boards now with, like, Osh, this is Oshpark Purple, so maybe they're made Oshpark, but it's easy yeah. to get unusual shaped PCB protos. Used to be you could only get them rectangular, but now you can get them in Lego figurine shape. Yeah, this is cute. And very cute. Okay, uh, this week, made with Moo, um, I'm going to have... A feature every week, but this yeah. is this I thought was interesting. Okay. So usually when we talk about Moo, it's the easiest, yes. best, easiest, fastest yeah, way to, to edit Python. Right, right, Python. But it's not just for Circuit Python. It's not just for um, micro. It's not just for hardware. It's, yeah. it's used for Pi Game Zero. It's you used can for use other on Raspberry Pi. Yeah, you can use on Raspberry Pi. And so yes, this what's, one. What's happening this week? Yeah, if you go to madewith.moo, um, there is an instructor that uh, they have a series of tutorials called Tinkology with Less. Not Less as in smaller, but Less. less got, got so Friday Fun, Python, Pollen Projects, Tooling Tuesday, Python 3, GeoPy, Tooling Tuesday, Google Image Search with Python, and then Tooling tu Tuesday, Easy GUI. And the person uses Moo for all these examples. Mm. Oh, so within Moo, it actually is using yeah. the graphics capability, which you yeah. can. You can you, just like we use the plotter for easy plot. You don't have to get a separate yeah. tool. And this one I really thought was cool because it, it, it within a few lines of code, you have the ability to do a very advanced thing. Like, let's say if you just wanted to type in the word penguin yeah. and have Google Images deliver a All penguin. All the penguins, yeah. Just a penguin yeah. into, your, into your folder. So That's this a is, very specific example. And this is it. This is Moo. Okay. And please enter keyword to search for. Okay, I you, want a penguin. You type penguin. Oh, good. I'm glad boop, they typed what I wanted. Boop. Okay. Downloads penguin. And then uh, if you look at your folder, look. Oh, right. That's exactly what I wanted. Yeah. So this is a really neat way to show what Python does, how you can do internet queries, and how you can get a penguin. Okay. Sweet. All right. Uh, next up. So uh, That's we, have, yeah, we have our weekly Circuit Python newsletter. That's right. It is now becoming one of the most popular newsletters already. Is it, is it the ever. best Python on microcontroller yes. newsletter? Yes. Is it the largest Python on microcontroller yes. newsletter? Yes. Is it the oldest Python on microcontroller newsletter? Yes. Therefore, you must subscribe. Yeah. So one of the things I thought that was neat, and this is, um, you know, Bill said some really nice things about the team. Yes. Um, today on the show and tell. But when people use Circuit Python, they also sometimes like we, we use this stuff so much we don't really understand how easy it is because we're like, oh, this is like the tutorial. No, we're in it. Yeah. We're in it. So uh, this was a presentation. This was a Geek Girl Beta PyCon Australia talk. Did a talk about lighting macro photographs with Circuit Python. So instead of just using expensive LED rig, yeah, made one with Circuit Python, and I just thought this was neat. This is a slide from the presentation. Beginner friendly, amazing yes. community. Yes. Documentation like whoa. Yes. Lower cost. Yes. That's it. Like Keanu Reeves wrote that. Whoa. Whoa. So I thought that was like you know some, and that's where we got uh, Code Plus community from the community. Well, she's correct. Yeah. And I, it sounds like we are. So I thought we this did was neat. Exactly what we hoped we would do. Okay. Okay. Um, more. And then also. Wow, this is like unending news. Yeah. Also in the newsletter, um, we didn't know about this. Someone wrote a Circuit Python book. So I guess uh, Kervnan, Kervnan? Um, Kerny if you search for CircuitPython on Amazon, it's an Amazon ebook, and it's pretty good. Did you pick it up? Yeah. Did you learn something? Yeah. Great. 
Yeah, I was like, oh, this is yeah, they did a good job. They did the itsy bitsy. It's itsy bitsy, which yeah. is great because it's like it's small, but it's an express board. You can plug it into a breadboard. It's low cost. Um, there's an M zero and of course an M four if you want to upgrade. And yeah, check out this yeah. check out this ebook. It's it's um, not too expensive. It's available on Amazon, so you can download it onto so, your uh, computer yeah, or Kindle. Or during the thousands of people tablet. that read the Adafruit Python on Hardware newsletter, you can get that at AdafruitDaily.com. This and more. We do not spam people whatsoever. It's the best, and it has all sorts of Python. It is not just Circuit Python, Micro Python, though we do That's have right. those. It has lots of cool yep. Python news. Okay, time travel. Look back, world makers, hackers, artists, and engineers. It's time travel time, Lady Ada. I'm Guess ready. What? I'm strapped in. All right. Congratulations. What did, Aya from Little Bits, you are on the cover of Make Magazine. Yes. Good. This has been something that I have wanted to see for a really long time. She 100% uh, deserves I, it. I have emails to the, the team that was at Make when we first met. I am like, oh my gosh, I is going to be bringing education and open source and electronics to makers, to hackers to I mean, she has, she has to a open source hardware that has become top selling number one rated toys. Yeah. Um, they released even more kits. I mean, they're like completely revolutionizing education for STEM, especially for younger kids. Um, snapping together the blocks are so easy. And yep. uh, look at our cool guitar. So as always, as always, with magazine covers, even even though people are like, oh, Prince dead, whatever, um, there's still magazine cover. There's still it matters. Th the idea of a magazine cover is probably always going to exist, even if there's a digital. I have make digital, and as soon as I saw this, I'm like, oh my gosh, um, we are what we celebrate. If you want to have more people in the world like Aya, celebrate them. She's so cool, and I she I, I saw that she was also celebrated um, at a, a Lebanese American event i mean yeah, yeah. So lebanese her, innovator, lebanese innovator. Like she's yeah. she's whacking them up and yep. totally is rocking out and little bits is i see it everywhere now um, everyone's using them and playing with them and learning with them yep. so good work Aya, and good, and good work, work make. make good job okay open source hardware we are open source hardware company lady we have 1569 tutorials this nice. week what's on the big board okay we had a lot um Okay, so let's start from the top uh, left. So we have Transistors 101. This is a guide from DSDELs. Um, a really great in-depth guide about transistors, just from the bottom up, how they work, when to use them, um, how to bias them, different kinds. It kind of covers everything. I mean, like, it's, it's a little technical, but also gets into some examples and just shows you, here's what you want to do, here's how you do it. Reef Pie guide number one. So we had this author on the show and tell, and we said, um, please uh, write a guide because uh, first off, there's these beautiful images of, of a reef. Uh, he has a, a saltwater reef that he cares for, and these, much like the oceans, they require care to keep them alive. You have to be careful. You don't want them um, to get too hot or too cold or too acidic, or too basic. So he um, set up a Raspberry Pi to be a full control system for his reef to track and monitor the temperature. Especially, you know, he wants to go away for a couple days, and if you're a reef parent it's kind of hard um, but with the reef pie it, it takes care of a lot for you um, so it's a full back-end system for automating reef management but probably can also care for other pets or um, mushrooms if you're into mycology or other um, plants or fishes that you want to care for um, we got another make it from uh, Mike Brella he's been doing these simple uh, you know you just want to use this sensor you just want to do this one thing here's a couple different ways of approaching it um, so make it shake, rattle, and roll is just about accelerometers. He uses Circuit Playground Express as a demo, but this stuff applies to everything. Um, talks about shake detection, motion detection, how to detect tilt. Um, you know, accelerometers are low cost and they're kind of in everything. We, we like to stick them on boards all the time. The Halloween has one, the Circuit Playground Express has one, the Microbit has one. Um, again, they're, they're so inexpensive and they do so much that you'll see them uh, pop up quite often in, um, in microcontroller and dev boards. So this guide is just about uh, how to do that in CircuitPython and make code different projects um, that you might want to build that you can build upon. Uh, we also got the massive uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild 3D printed blade saw. We're going to show the full video for that because it's an epic build for their 200th episode. Um, from Erin Blaine, she made these beautiful glowing mirror masks. Uh, and uh, we'll show the video as well. But they're just these gorgeous. And the way she did this reflective mylar material um, the mask like shimmers and glows from the inside and that's using a Halloween You can use anything with NeoPixels uh, wired up. Yeah. Uh, we also have show. Make a glowing mirror mask with NeoPixels and an Adafruit Halloween A flexible one-way mirror is combined with holographic vinyl 
to create a stunning display. Animations on the Halloween's TFT screen complete the look with an animated butterfly or a fire-breathing dragon. See the full build tutorial on the Adafruit Learning System and remember to subscribe for more fun projects. You saw as a nice bonus, um, as a nice bonus, you saw the TFT on the Halloween uh, can act as like a cabochon, like a little animated GIF uh, display. So um, these really gorgeous masks by Erin, her, her crafting is, uh, you know, the best in the world. She always makes them, something look as good as possible. Um, she does it for a living. And then uh, the Halloween All-Seeing Skull, you saw that um, JP, uh, in JP's video um, that he, he posted that we um, showed a couple minutes ago. Um, it has a PIR sensor to detect motion. And then the other side has um, the Halloween TFT with the uh, lens, the, uh, the glass or plastic lens, to make it look kind of like an eyeball. And then the sensor can detect light and dark, and so it'll make the um, eyeball, uh, the irises, uh, in increase or uh, decrease in size, uh, kind of like your eyes do when it gets bright out or dim out. Um, but it's a really cool hack, taken off the shelf, $5. Uh, skull. They're available in like every hardware store right now. Um, so if you pick one up, you can make it even better. And then uh, we started off with the MIDI solenoid drummer. That's by Colin. Uh, so using the Cricut to um, control four solenoids. And it's, it's an excellent uh, way to quickly control uh, and solenoids to make into a drum machine. Um, but he took it a step further and hooked it up with MIDI um, using a feather. Uh, an Arduino and to Ableton Live, and so we can actually control it as a MIDI device so they can see the sequencer. You, you can make like very beautiful sounding um, music and beats using right. this organic sound effect. There's like, one second. That's from the beginning of the show. Yeah, and of course it's on YouTube and check out the guide. It's, yeah. just, it's just awesome. Um, I, people always talk about how they want to make solenoid instruments. Here's the step-by-step guide, and then okay. finally, make it, I know we had so many guides, make it hot or cold by Mike Borella. Um, how to use a uh, heating element or resistive heating element or a Peltier cooling element to make something hot or cold and a potentiometer to adjust how hot you want it. And then it'll even use a temperature sensors feedback uh, to regulate the temperature. So if you want something at 90 degrees or you know 20 degrees, whatever it is, it will keep that temperature steady. Okay. Whew. A lot of guides. Whew. All right, so um, much. made in New York City factory footage. Take it away, Adafruit Factory.
about doing some inspections oh yay check okay. out those yep. bonnets that one's good that one's good that good. 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 good approved approved good. approved good. yep yep good. yep yep good. hold on wait wait yeah. hold on <laughs> no and here's what the pick and place machines and your factory falls asleep to or wakes up to every day beautiful that is uh, made in new york Alright, 3D printing, no Pedro. Printing up a bunch of stuff. This is the epic build video for the chainsaw. I know, this thing. is the Breath of the Wild. Okay, here we go. Blade saw. Take it away. Hey, what's up, guys? In this project, we're building the ancient blade saw from Zelda Breath of the Wild. So this is a fully 3D printed prop that has an actual moving chainsaw with tons of NeoPixel LEDs. It has lots of details making this one of our most intricate builds. It's pretty massive, over 40 inches in length and has over 200 NeoPixels. The ancient blade saw is a pretty cool weapon that looks like a chainsaw. In the game, Link has it forged from the tech lab. It's a pretty fun weapon that can take down guardians by just swinging it around. So we wanted to make this blade saw look and feel like it was straight out of the game. We designed the blade saw in Fusion 360 using reference images from the game. All of the parts are printed individually and secured together with hardware. The main parts are 3D printed using an Ultimaker S5. Parts are dual extruded to make built-in light diffusion so details printed in translucent filament will illuminate. We used NinjaFlex to create a flexible sleeve for the handle. The design files are free to download and the source file is open for remixing. We used glitter infused filament to give the parts a bit of texture. You can get a full list of parts to build this project, links are in the description. Support material was used for creating the recessed panels. A palette knife can get in between the layers and flush cutters can break apart the supports. A tapping tool creates threads in the built-in standoffs for fastening hardware. Two halves of the blade are joined together using long machine screws. The Adafruit Cricket for the Circuit Playground Express is a fully loaded robotics platform that will drive all the components. The PCB is secured to the built-in standoffs near the center of the blade saw. A speaker can be press fitted into the holder. To power this project, a slide switch is wired to a AA battery pack. If you're new to wiring electronics, check out the learn guide for a full rundown. The assembly instructions are documented along with the code and circuit diagram. The slide switch fits into the little holder with the actuator on the outside. Battery packs can be mounted next to the PCB. The blade saw is lined with NeoPixel strips and wedged in between the standoffs. More strips are cut to size and wired to jumper cables for making quick connections. Screw block terminals make it easy to connect the NeoPixel strips to the Adafruit Cricut. Additional strips are wired and fitted inside the housing. These strips follow the contour of the various design elements. Single NeoPixels can be wired to the strips and used to fill specific areas. The Metal Gear DC motor is secured inside the blade and wired to jumper cables. A 3D printed gear gets attached to the shaft and engages the teeth of the chain. Panels are fitted inside to provide support for the chain while it's in motion. Buttons are wired up and used as triggers for turning on components and switching modes. These are inserted into the built-in holders on the inside. A panel mounted USB cable extends the connection for programming the boards. The chain is made up of linkages that are connected with rivets made from bits of filament. Ball bearings reduce friction and provide the teeth with a smooth surface. The chain is fitted over the ball bearings and the drive wheel press fits into the blade. The two halves are joined together and secured with machine screws. Various embellishments are glued to the outside. Parts of the handle are press fitted over the tang. A wooden dowel is inserted through the NinjaFlex sleeve. An LED and coin cell breakout are fitted inside the pommel to illuminate the details. Additional NinjaFlex sleeve fits over the handle and provides two-handed support. A 
button actuators installed over the reset button for flashing new firmware. We used MateCode to program the Adafruit Cricut. Code blocks made it easy to test LED animations and drive the motor. There's so many things the Adafruit Cricut can do, we could take this much further with servos and sensors like the accelerometer or even capacitive touch. Our learn guide is pretty detailed, so definitely check it out. Thanks so much for watching and be sure to subscribe for new projects every week. And of course, to follow that up, we have a speed up of a Viking helmet. Go Vikings! <laughs> well, sorry. Okay, and congratulations, Dome Pedro, and the entire 3D printing community for supporting us and for supporting them on 200. the 200th episode. Epic! So every Wednesday, it's 3D Hangouts. That's a lot. I mean, that's, you know what's interesting? It's like, there's people who are like, I'm going to do a show, and they're like, and it's going to be a weekly show, and they do like two shows or three shows. It's hard to it's do. Hard up. It's hard doing it every week, and it's real hard to do it 200 weeks yeah. in a row. Four yeah. years worth. Yep. Okay. That's a lot. Um, Adabox is shipping soon. Here are a couple friendly reminders. If you don't have Adabox, you should. Here's why. Wait, they're friendly? <laughs> <laughs>
So this is the long kind and this is the short kind. But they're, they're actually like otherwise the exact same thing. Just they're, I mean, you can even cut the long ones down if you want. Um, and then you get two matching ones. You get two matching ones. And they're symmetric. So they have, if you can kind of see, there's these two little prongs. These two prongs, and they fit into each other. So you fit the prong in like this. And then, you know, you don't have to squeeze all the way. So if you have something really thick, you can stop here. Or you can keep going until you've gone all the way to the end. And that's the um, thinnest of the material you can do. So this one is, you know, about like a half an inch or so. And then uh, I think this one's like 12 millimeter. And this one's, these are the short ones. So you can see they're much shorter pronged. Same idea though, you push them together. This is as long as you can get. And then, you know, there's little uh, clicks and you can keep clicking it until you get to the bottom. And so, uh, you know, two different ranges, but um, super solid. I mean, like they don't really come apart after you're done, but they're inexpensive enough. Yep. And yeah, they work great for any kind of large cardboard crafting. So we've got smaller rivets and now we've got these bigger rivets. The smaller ones are good for like a thin cardboard and like paperboard. And these are good for like, you got refrigerator boxes, uh, shipping de delivery boxes with lots of different pieces. Um, this is what you want to use. And they look good too, look nice. My fits. Next up. Next up. Battery holder. Battery holder, this is a nice battery holder. So the deal with this battery holder is, um, you'll notice, not only does it full hold four AA batteries, okay, so you're, you're rocking, you got some light, you, know, you got um, nickel metal hydrides, about five volts, you got alkalines, you got six volts, but on the ends, you'll see not just wires, but you'll see little premium headers. So you can plug these directly into a breadboard or a development board with female headers. So it's a couple of cents more, but we covered that cost and we got these made so that you can just plug them right in. Um, if you've ever struggled to plug in batteries into a breadboard, you know how annoying it is? Well, this solves your problem. I mean, I can show it, but it's kind of the same as these images. Okay, I think the images moving. are pretty clear. All right, next up. Okay, and then Canary. That's why this is the code tonight. This is the Canary, so Canary Yellow is the handle, Canary is the name. This is a beautiful uh, Japanese made uh, cardboard cutters. I mean, it's, it's a knife specifically for cutting cardboard and it works really well at it. So I will show a demo of it. Yes, um, um, we've had to make so many cardboard robot projects and cardboard projects that we wanted to get these in the store. It took a while, but these are fantastic. Okay, and they're, this, what's really nice is that they've got this non-stick handle, so it's like a Teflon-y handle. So even if you've got like stickers or tape on it, it'll cut yeah. right through. Don't worry about it. It's not going to get like you know. You, sometimes you cut with scissors, and then you if cut you use tape an with it. And knife, then you're going to just get hurt. You're going to get hurt. Just don't and with use scissors, an exacto knife. Don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah, it's not a good idea. Um, so this, it's just like a saw. Yeah, and you can do and you can curves and more and like. It's just really easy. Yeah. And it's less dangerous. See, so even even now, I can. Yeah. I'm clumsy, and I manage not to hurt myself. Um, but you can cut, you know, unusual shapes, and they're they look quite nice because they're nicely sawn. Um, you're not going to poke yourself like with an exacto. Um, all that happens is you end up uh, cutting your fingers. Um, with this, it's not sharp. This is made just for this. Yeah. So I mean, like, don't eat it. Um, and don't poke in your eye, but uh, you you can't easily hurt yourself. And it's great for cardboard, it just works really well. Um, so if you're doing a lot of cardboard crafting or if you have a school or a maker space, you might wanna pick one of these up. It's just like, it's a specialized tool, but once you use this, you don't really wanna use anything else. You will not go back. You will not Write go back. Write your name on it, because someone will take it. I know, okay. that's the handle for writing your name on it. Okay, next up. Okay, here's a thing. It's a thing. It's the Things Network. Yeah. We have a Things Network router, it's a TTN. This is a really well-made, beautifully engineered LoRaWAN router. It uh, has an SX1301 uh, chipset, so it can do like eight simultaneous channel scans. It can support like hundreds of nodes. This is like a really nice router. Um, we actually uh, uh, chatted with both the city and the Things Network, and New York City is going to be putting up a bunch of these routers in various buildings around Manhattan. So if you have a LoRaWAN project, you can connect to um, you know, free routers and yep. get your data onto the internet. So LoRaWAN is uh, this low power, 
radio system. It's free, unlike Sigfox. You don't have to pay um, subscription fees or usage fees, but you'll need a router because the LoRaWAN, which, um, you know, we have our Feather um, M0 Expresses. They have, a, I have an old show. It has a, a LoRa chipset on it, um, but it doesn't connect to the internet directly. It's not Wi-Fi or cellular, but it's really low cost and it's really low power. So the trade-off is you'll need to have this router and the router is what takes the LoRa packet data that's like 900 megahertz and can go a couple kilometers and then this connects to Wi-Fi or Ethernet and then will transmit your data to the thing's network. Now you're probably like, oh man, I'm gonna have to learn all this software and I have to like do this configuration and I'm sure it's like, I gotta like do Linux kernel stuff. Well, you're in luck with the thing's network, you don't have to. And this is why it's great to support them. They've got uh, this full backend that makes it really, really easy for you to deploy your router. Like this router's app, it's called Adafruit. Yeah. Uh, it's got a location. And the software is excellent. Here's some screenshots. Yeah. Um, this is us testing. We set it up with a feather. We were going in, you know, 15 minutes uh, using the uh, Laura Wan example we found from MCCI. Um, so you can see data, there's timestamps. So you don't have to write the software. This is all done for you. I'll show you the gateway traffic, who's connected. You can have authorization, so you don't have to, you know, it's, it's unencrypted because Laura is unencrypted. Um, but you can, um, you know, you, you can do private obfuscation if you want of your data. Yeah, this is neat. This is um, temperature. It, yeah, and you, can, you can do this cool metadata thing with it. Yeah, it has metadata, but you can, and I'll tell you like the frequency, and the rate, all this stuff it'll store for you. Uh, it'll tell you the signal strength, but it can also decode the data. So you see in the middle there, there's an Arduino um, uh, serial monitor, and you can see this, the, our, the Feather M0 is sending LoRa data, and you can see it being received boop, boop, on the boop, website. Boop, 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 so boop, it's boop. like all, all that back end stuff is taken care of for you, and then you can hook that data into other like web hooks or like MQTT, whatever you want, yeah. you can get that data. So um, the Things Network is a free service, but you know, it, it does take time and effort and money to support it. So when you pick up one of these routers, not only are you getting an excellent FCC certified product that works quite well, um, but you are also supporting um, their uh, endeavor to create this uh, LoRa WAN um, sensor network that basically in every city, they started in the Netherlands, but in America, they would like to get more city coverage as well. I thought I would show the innards of this things network yeah. as well. What's inside? Yeah. This stuff. This is why it's where. So you can remove the cover, and it's very hackable. It's open source. Um, inside here, there's a PIC32 processor. It's the main processor. This is the radio. Uh, and this is the SX1301, and this is the radio. It's kind of warm because it's been running for a while. Um, it's got FCC ID on it. Uh, it's got the Ethernet jack if you want to do Ethernet. Uh, this is the LoRa antenna. It also has Wi-Fi somewhere here. I think this is the Wi-Fi module, and then this is maybe Bluetooth. Um, it's a lot of microchip stuff. Microchip does a lot of uh, LoRa products. Um, you can add GPS if you want. So it doesn't come with a GPS, but you know it's it's pluggable right in here. Um, this is a programming header if you want to program the chip. It's all open source, of course. Um, a B header, so if you have an XB or XB compatible device and you want to plug it in, uh, you can plug it in right there. So you can see this is like hackable, hackable. SD card slot, I don't know what that's for, but I'm sure it's something cool. Um, and uh, the big things logo over there. And then, yeah, and it's got these cool um, rubber uh, attachy things so you can stick it onto your window. So we're gonna stick it on the window here so people can use this as well and then yeah you can configure a router to either be like open for everybody or you need to have a key you know all, all that stuff that you expect and uh, deploying it's really easy because they want to make it um, super fast for people to uh, add on uh, but check out the things network they have uh, tons of guides and tutorials on all of this stuff to get going with Laura I mean uh, Sigfox is great but you do have to pay for it and what's nice about Laura is once you've picked up the hardware you don't have to pay subscription fees after that. So it's not, it's not an open patent-free protocol, unfortunately, but you don't have to have subscription fees to use it. So it's, it's, this is a, a great reason why um, setting up a free router uh, for your network or neighborhood and your community is it's something you should do. Okay. Okay, put um, that back on. I don't know if you saw in the news, there is a number one best-selling book sold out in all bookstores. I heard it's, about it. It's it's it, it's an in-depth look it's an in at <laughs> yeah. um, what's going inside uh, the circuit playground. And I'm actually serious. This is uh, congratulations, Mike Barella, um, one of the Adafruit team members. 
Um, new releases in electrical and electronic circuits. It's number one on Amazon Hot New Releases. Hot. You can see it here. Hot. That's right. Hot. And number it's one. coming soon and, in the Adafruit Shop. And uh, we have it in the Adafruit Shop very shortly, so sign up for it. Congratulations, Mike. He's worked on this for a really long time. It is Epic. the best book for using the Circuit Playground Express, using MakeCode, using Circuit Python, and using Arduino. This is out. It is here. Mike will be at Maker Fair, and, and he'll be signing these. Yes, he'll be at Maker Fair in New York. But this book is great because it is a triple duty book. It talks about Make Code. It talks about Circuit Python. Talks about Arduino. You you will learn how to use a Circuit Playground Express in many different ways. Um, this is not even Mike's first book. He's written uh, the Great Trinket book. No. He's Wasn't written first dozens radio. and do yeah, he's done this. He's written dozens and dozens of guides. Um, but the book has like beautiful color images and it's it's compact. No anonymous sources in this book. None. 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 The fire and fury. All of on the record. LEDs. Okay. Um, and then of course so hopefully there'll be a digital edition as well. And so if you don't want to buy a physical book, uh, uh, you can uh, go to the O'Reilly website and buy a uh, digital edition. Yeah, that'll all be out soon. So we have uh, yeah. coming soon page up. And anyone who's with some people from the Ada community has helped review it, and they're all like, "This is the best." Yep. Okay. All right, and with that, Lady Ada is new products. Yay! Okay. Recap time. Spooky new, spooky new recap time. We got these rivets, these nice chunky rivets with like 20 millimeter diameter heads. There's like two pieces you snap them together. Great for chunky cardboard projects. But uh, we got a double A battery holder, four double A batteries, and look, you got those nice premium headers on the end, so you just plug it right into your breadboard or your dev board. Mmm, so nice. The Canary um, Specialized Cardboard Cutting Tool. This is like a little cardboard saw, and it's perfect for cutting cardboard. It even has a non-stick Teflon coating, so it won't get gooey if you're cutting through tape. The Things Network Router is a really beautiful, uh, greatly engineered open source router uh, with Wi-Fi, Ethernet, to LoRaWAN, so you can uh, have a really uh, cool, uh, low, uh, sorry, long-range LoRaWAN network and you can route that data to the internet using the Things Network, and they do all the backend stuff. And we've got coming soon Mike Borella's epic book, bestseller on Amazon. Number one bestseller. Hot new release, bestseller. Getting sold out of all bookstores. Sold out. It did. It is getting started with Adafruit Circuit Playground Express with MakeCode, Circuit Python, and Arduino. It is the best way to explore all sorts of different elements of sensing, LEDs, inputs, output, capacitive touch, all there from the beginners to experts. Mike Borella is the man. Okay. Knows how to write a book. Pick it up. Okie dokie. So we're going to okay, so we're gonna do some top secret, but first, Code Scanner, if you saw a bunch of this stuff and it's in stock, you can get a discount. Let's do top secret. Let's okay. Do top secret. Um, I've got one thing real quick. Show your top secret. Sure. So um, this is just on the left hand side of the screen because it is uh, a video from a phone. And this is a preview of our new. Mm. AR feature. So you'll be able to scan a code on an invoice. Okay. And it will pop up something you purchased in the virtual world, the AR world. So Sweet. if you bought a Cricut and you wanted to see the model because you want to put it together, lots of fun surprises ahead and more. Neat. Next up, if you wanted to build a lightsaber, you may like the saber wing coming soon coming soon saber wing i kind of wanted to make a low cost but complete lightsaber and prop driver for any feather but of course feather m0 and feather yeah. m4 work best so you get the speaker neopixel out one watt rgb led driver accelerometer and uh you know plenty of breakouts you like building star wars stuff and lightsabers that's the wing for you Next up, this is going to be out soon. This yes. is the Raspberry Pi Hat Cricket. This took a little bit longer because we, uh, this actually has some cool stuff added. Not only does it do all the Cricket things like the solenoid drives and the stepper motors and the DC motors and the NeoPixel and this, the speaker is actually an I2S speaker. And uh, we actually even got the popping issues that we've had with I2S resolved. Got the capacitive touch input and the USB port is also a USB serial converter. So you can just like debug your Cricket robot directly. Pretty yeah. epic. Design coming soon. It's all top secret. It's not out yet. Yeah. Can't talk about it. Okay. Um, well, so here, so we're going to answer some questions. Yeah. And you have to do that in Discord. Yeah. Adafruit.it slash Discord. Now, one of the questions was, will the Sabre wing have a micro SD card?
card slot for sound files. We, it's not out yet, so we can't answer, but here's what I will say. Since we do things in the CircuitPython world, there's probably onboard storage, no matter what, for WAV files, that's but probably. That's not, I'm not answering the question. I'm just stating a normal I'm just saying, fact, yeah, yeah, the Feather M0 and M4 do have built-in storage, so, you know, and it shows up in the disk drive, so instead of having to deal with SD cards... Okay, so there's one thing micro SD cards do. They fly across the room at the worst times. They yeah. do. So this way you don't have to use it. If, if you were using a Feather M0 or M4, you just drag the files on, yep. and they're right there. I think in the past, people have been stuck with soundboards and, and other things. And the only things. way to do it with and the only way. For us, everything we do has onboard storage. Yeah. Why have another thing that's going to get lost, changed? You have to write extra code for it. Yeah, and yep. they take up they take, take up power, and it it's, gets lost. It adds yep. cost. Yeah. Okay. Next up, can you provide suggestions to add one or two seven-segment displays to a Circuit Playground Cricket project using Circuit Python and or MakeCode? Yeah, um, this MakeCode doesn't really support seven segments, but our HT 16K33 backpacks have tons of Circuit Python code. Um, plug that into the SDA and SCL pins in Circuit Python, and you can just use it as is. For the AR thing, could you provide the 3D files with that QR code? That would be a great resource. Yeah, I think we put them up all. They're all in our um, GitHub repo yeah. under like CAD files. Yeah, but we'll. That's one way to do it. Um, are you going to make a Trinket M4? Um, not. We're not sure yet because. Itsy Bitsy M4. There's an Itsy Bitsy M4, but the problem is there's no smaller chip than that that isn't BGA, and I would like to do a Trinket M4, but it, it, it requires us to handle this 0.4 millimeter BGA, which I'm like really not excited about. Yeah. So I think we're going to do the Mega M4 first. And then turn around and maybe do the Trinket M4. But I, I'm not actually convinced we'll be able to do it. It might be quite challenging um, to get the M4 um, BGA working efficiently enough to, to justify it. But we'll try. Okay. Well, while we're doing the giveaway, if there's anything else, I'll, uh, I might ask. Okay. Let's, uh, let's do the giveaway. What do you want to give away tonight? We're going to give away Canary Cutter. Okay, that's nice. Because everyone has cardboard. Okay, what are the rules? Uh, rules question. are, if you've won before on this show, you can't win again. Only one winner per my lifetime. Uh, the first person to call the phone number, and we put it up, and answer the three magic questions is going to be the winner. So what you're going to do is you're going to call the phone number, and I'm going to pick up the Magic Radio Shack phone, and I'm going to say, Ahoy, Ahoy, and that's yeah. how you know it's me and not somebody else. Mm -hmm. After I say, Ahoy, Ahoy, and you say hello, I'm going to say, congratulations, you're the winner. What's your name? Where are you calling from? And what's a project you're working on or you want to work on? If you can answer those three questions, yeah. you will win the Canary Cardboard Cutter. It's that easy. That's the phone number. So call this number. Oh, but stab. That's the phone. This is the phone. It's right there. Oh, um, there you go. That's fine. Um, all right, we'll do a question. The um, all-seeing eye. With USB adoption, USB-C adoption get higher every day, will we ever put USB-C in board designs and any negative assets? Well, it's more expensive and there's a bunch of uh, It is things. more expensive and it's bigger, so it makes our designs larger, so... We will, of course, eventually we will yeah. have to go to USB-C, um, but it might be a year until we do a lot of designs. I, th I think yeah. people, you know, only really Mac people have USB-C. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but, um, oh, see, that's the telephone that's ringing. Yeah. That's how you can tell. Well, second ring is when I pick up. Nope, they See, stopped. this is why I they don't, stopped. this is why I don't pick whoever up on called, the Whoever called, call back. It's still hung up. Oh, oh there you go. There okay, wait, hold on. There you okay. go, there you go. Okay, one more ring, one more ring, one more Second ring. Second ring? Yeah, 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 yeah. <gasps> okay, time to pick up. Okay, pick it up. Oh, they hung they up hung again. Up. They hung up again. They hung up. They're still tricky. Okay. Sneaky. All right. Okay. Go ahead, pick it up. Ready? Yeah. Pick it up. Just pick it up. Pick no. It up. Pick it up. They No, they hung up. You should just pick it up. Pick it up. Ahoy, ahoy. Ahoy, ahoy. What? Hello, can, Hello. You, can you turn down your computer audio? Okay, sure. Are you still there? Okay, yeah, are you back? Great. Ahoy, ahoy, you are the winner of a fabulous canary cutter. Congratulations. Uh -huh. Yay, what's your name and where are you calling from? I'm Eric, I'm calling from Philadelphia. Okay, Eric from Philadelphia. Well, you sound great, and uh, you're going to get this canary cutter. It's going to be so handy for cutting cardboard of all types. All you have to do to win it and get it shipped to you is email support at idfruit.com, S-U-P-P-O-R-T, at idfruit.com, and say, hey, it's Eric from Philadelphia, and I won the Canary Cutter product number 32, oh, sorry, 3929. If you tell them that magic number, 3929, they will ship it to you. All right, great. Okay, oh. 
Well, maybe they can uh, add that to an order or something. I need some parts as well. Well, you know, we'll figure it out. But what's the project you're working on or you want to work on? I'm working on a uh, Raspberry Pi powered uh, thermostat for my house. You're, sorry, Raspberry Pi powered what? Thermostat. 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 Oh, cool. That's a great project. Okay, cool. Home automation is great where it's at. Fun. Yeah, we just did a bunch of Adafruit uh, automation projects with the Raspberry Pi. So uh, maybe this cardboard cutter will come in handy. And once you finish your project, come by on the show and tell. We'd love to see it. Awesome. Control Thanks. your house. All right, have a great night. You too. Bye. Okay, success. Yeah, yeah that was it. All right, well, that was a show for Night Lady. Thanks, everybody. That was epic. Yeah, that was a big show. Whew. So we'll be here next week, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. There will be some pr- surprises. Surprises and more. Surprises and prizes. Surprises and more. And uh, thank you, everybody, for supporting us. And open source hardware company in New York City. The code is Canary. Use that up to 11.59 tonight. It supports us, Team Adafruit. And thank you for being a great community out there. Thank you to all the Adafruit team members here and around the world. And thanks, everybody, in the Discord chat and all the different chats out there. It is a team effort. We will see you soon. Here is your moment of Zener. Good night, everybody.